Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Mental Complex here. And today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Kaiser gavel designed by a gentleman named Mark Perez. I'm not sure that there's any markings there, but this is uh this is a um a pretty premium knife considering the price tag. Um it is much closer to budget territory than I think a lot of people might have guessed. I will link this knife down in the description so you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Kaiser for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Gavel coming in at about 6.65 inches on the smaller side. Blade length is coming in at about 2.85 cutting edge. Just a hair over 2.75 inches. How about some size comparisons? Any custom scales you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and Others. So up against the 8010 and the 8020.5, definitely on the smaller side. Cutting edge, though, is fairly similar to the AD 20.5, just pointing that out. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Once again, smaller than both, but the cutting edge is very similar, if not identical. It's actually, actually I think it has slightly more cutting edge than the Spyderco Para 3. Last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Gruptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. Alrighty, how's the action on this knife? So this is a liner lock, plenty of access to that liner lock right there. And it is very smooth, actually so smooth, you really have to get your finger out of the way. This has probably the lowest profile flipper tab I've ever seen. Now it does work and it's obviously, the, the idea here is obviously to make sure that the flipper tab essentially disappears in the open and closed position, which is kind of neat, right? If you're big on satisfaction of deployment, you might not love this because it kind of feels like you have to kind of dig and find it and then flip it. But if you're not so big on satisfaction of deployment and you just kind of like the designiness of having a super low profile flipper tab so that it's nice to look at in the open and closed position, you don't have like a boot heel or a unicorn horn hanging off the thing, then you might appreciate that. For what he was trying to accomplish here, I think he did a great job. Uh, Kaiser did a great job of executing it. Honestly, it's there enough and the jimping is just deep enough to where you can use the meat of your finger and almost like slide it. It's not quite a light, it's almost like a sliding movement or you can do the traditional light switch and it does, it works. <laughs> it requires just the right detent and just the right amount of traction to get that to work, but it does work. So would it be more satisfying with a super honed in detent and the flipper and you get the click and the break and the swing and the clack. Yeah, sure. But that's not necessarily what he was trying to accomplish here, obviously. For what he was trying to do, though, it really does work. So I got to hand it to him. Uh, that's cool. And I think the D10 is tuned properly for that to work. Let's do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It is pretty thick. Now, that's because we have scales and bolsters on top of liners. These are lipped and not nested, meaning they come all the way out to the edge. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. Um, actually, even with a little bit of extra thickness, this really wasn't, it just felt like a regular pocket knife. It didn't feel like anything overly thick or overly cumbersome. It is shorter, closed up than the PM2 and Pair 3 and nowhere near as tall. So really, truthfully, my carry experience was just fine. It's big enough that I was aware that it was there. So let's go ahead and do a hardware check. And I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Where is the mark? There it is. This is a T8. So we have a T8 pivot. There we go. And then your uh, screws for the scales are T8. The screws for the clip are T8. And then we have at least one screw back here. Wouldn't surprise me if you take this scale. I'm not going to do it because honestly, who cares? But it wouldn't surprise me if you take the scale off and there's one more down here, maybe not. In any case, it's really not that hard to take apart. I'm kind of surprised that we don't have holes milled out for lefty carry, but what are you going to do? I'm glad that everything's T8, right? And it, it's not an enormous amount of hardware. As long as you have the, the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. 
go ahead and weigh it. What are we looking at for materials? We have Grandma's Couch Micarta. I'm just kidding. This is a burlap -y kind of Micarta, which honestly looks pretty good with the brass. They coupled it with the right materials. So we have brass scales. I'm sorry, brass bolsters, which are actual bolsters. Uh, and then we have a steel liner, and we have 154 cm for the blade and titanium for the pocket clip. Um, pretty interesting combination of materials, uh, honestly. Now, what would be super helpful is if uh, in the exact moment that I just decided to start the review, I know exactly where my scale is. And I have found it. I have located it. It turns out it was immediately to my left. Okay. Uh, the weight on this guy. Fairly heavy for the size at 3.67 ounces, but nothing we should be crying our pants about, right? It will come in and out of your pocket with relative ease. The only people who are going to really notice it are people who are, for some reason, min-maxing their life around the mini bug out. But, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you like that, if you're big into that, it's fine. I'm just cracking jokes. This is fine. Uh, balance is in, actually the balance is right behind the pivot. I never noticed that. Um, not bad, right? It does feel a little bit heavy for the size of the knife, but nothing crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness real quick, and then we'll jump into the meat and potatoes. And uh, not not an enormous amount to say here. Honestly, this is pretty straightforward. The blade stock thickness is coming in at 107 thousandths, honestly, on the thinner side. All right, meat and potatoes time. Very classic profile. Certainly a profile we have seen many, many times. We have a nice drop point blade with a flat and a swedge. 154 cm that does come down to a reasonably thin cutting edge. I'm a huge fan of 154 cm. This is, of course, the ingot version of the steel CPM. 154 being the powder form version. Not an enormous difference between the performance. Honestly, 154 cm is extremely well-rounded. It's very easy to touch up. It's stainless. It is reasonably tough. It's one of those steels that's just good. And it's also one of those steels that it is acceptable in that weird territory from $75 to $150. Yeah, there's some other steels that some people like to see, but most of the time, people are totally okay with it. And truthfully, there are plenty of custom makers that use RWL34 all the way up into the multiple thousands of dollars because it's really easy to finish, honestly, but it also has reasonable, uh, reasonably good performance. Um, so, and that's the same, essentially the same thing. It's going to perform almost identically. So, um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's the blade steel is great. Uh, love it. I love the uh, bolsters. I love uh, how seamlessly they, I mean, it, it really is, the only reason you know it's there's a transition is because it's two completely different materials, but they, they are like really, it's machined to perfection. You get a titanium pocket clip on this guy, which is pretty cool, right? Now, I think it's a little bit long. I think we probably could have ended it about right here. Um, ergonomically, yeah, you're going to notice it, and it's because the handle's so short and the pocket clip is so long. I think the pocket clip should be reduced by probably about 33% in this case, and it would help out just a little bit. Fortunately, you can actually choke up by putting your index finger right here. This is about the most comfortable way to hold the knife. Most of the time, though, truthfully, with a knife of this size, you're going to be holding it like this, or you're going to be holding it like this, and it works for that. This is almost like it's like an, an outdoor themed or an outdoor aesthetic knife, but it works really well as just like a regular office or just general day-to-day -day -day, like EDC knife. It just kind of has that kind of almost classic outdoorsy look, right? It's the combination of the vintage uh, grandma's couch micarta and uh, the um, the bolsters, which by the way, if your hands are like mine, this will they will patina over time, just adding to that look, right? He probably could have offered another version of this with copper, but as far as I know, this is the only one that's available. Standard satin finish on the blade, that's fine, right? I would have preferred tumbled, but it's okay. Kaiser does a good job not burning their satin, their belt satin finish blades. Nice tip, nice belly, reasonably thin behind the edge. It'll perform the cutting tasks that you, you know, would do with a knife like this, so that's fine. Edges are nicely knocked down. A subtle amount of contouring as well. Just a little tiny bit, not enormously apparent, but if you look closely, it is actually slightly contoured, so that's nice. We have a uh, great fit and finish throughout, great seating of the hardware, all right? The, the liners don't stick out too far or anything like that. We have a little micarta backspace here. It definitely should have been milled out for, um, you know, lefty carry. 
Uh, the pocket clip is titanium and looks slightly out of place due to, number one, its size and the finish on the clip, which is found nowhere else on the knife. I think it probably should have been finished like the liners, but okay, that's pretty nitpicky, right? In and out of the pocket, it's fine. Good retention. It's just a little bit long. Uh, the stop pin is located in its traditional position. A little bit of shouldering there. This knife runs on bearings. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. No pivot lash. Very smooth and consistent in here. And a nice medium detent. The liner locks on Kaiser knives will hold up well enough. Don't need to do much more than that to prove that this knife is capable of doing exactly what it was built to do, which is cut with this side of the blade and not hammer with this side of the blade. Surprisingly, this knife comes in at $82. And I say that because I've seen Kaiser try to pass stuff like this off at $100 or $110. They're usually pretty good about pricing. I think this is wonderfully priced. It's obviously a little... This is why I call this the weird... This is like the Bermuda Triangle of the knife world. Because a lot of good and well-priced knife designs that are between $75 and $150 just drop off the face of the earth. Because people either want like spectacular budget knives or they want the best knife between two and three hundred dollars. Like it's it's like budget or premium. And this in-between zone, it's really hard for something to become an evergreen and stay with us for years and years and years. It's such a weird area. Um but uh eighty-two bucks, that makes this by my standards, that's seven dollars over the peak of the budget territory. <laughs> we have materials here that are, uh, you know, considered in a higher territory, I guess. 154 cm, the brass, and eh, kind of, uh, titanium clip, and just the overall build quality, right? It does, this does not feel like a $50 Sabibi knife. No. Kaiser does a good job here. Um, this is a cool knife. It's not going to be for everybody, but honestly, everything that this was supposed to be, I think it is, right? I wish the clip was a little bit shorter. I wish it was milled out for lefties. And honestly, I wish we had some different um, options for the bolster and scales. I wish that we had, um, you know, maybe some G10 or some a, a different type of micarta, right? Um, but as far as the burlap stuff goes, which is not my favorite in the whole world, right? Then that's that's fine. That's a that's a, a personal thing. The combination of the brass bolster with this stuff is, I think, very tastefully done. And over time with the patina, it's just going to look better. Um, so yeah, honestly, eighty-two bucks. That's very fair. Um, not something that's, oh my gosh, you must, you know, kick down every door you can find to try and get this knife, right? But if you like how this looks and you agree with the parts of the, the parts of this review that kind of, you know, resonate with you, I think you'll like this. Generally speaking, it is a recommendable knife, but not in the way that's like everybody needs to own this, right? For people looking for a good pocket knife, if this kind of fits your style, fits your vibe, this is done well, it's designed well, it's obviously made by somebody who cares, um... Very good. Good stuff. That's going to be pretty much it. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.